but is always present in our lives. We thank you for this glorious, wonderful day that you've given to us to come as we see David and Christina join in this covenant union, join together as a new family. Lord, we pray for this wedding and for this couple that you would pour down much grace and blessing in their lives. We pray that as they begin this new life together, that they would be so filled with love for one another, love that comes from you and flows through them to one another, that you would bless this marriage, pour out this incredible blessing upon blessings. We pray that you would bless the families that are involved here. Thank you so much for the years of faithfulness from these parents as they have raised their children to this day. And as we would celebrate this day together, may your presence be so real here. And as they begin their new life together, we pray that we will send them with much blessing and that your provision and your grace would just flow so abundantly into their lives. May they be a couple that would really shine brightly in the midst of a dark world as they love one another, as they serve, as they die to themselves and love one another. May they be a couple that has surrendered to your lordship and really living their whole lives for a greater purpose and really living their lives for the kingdom. We just thank you so much for this glorious day and as we partake in these vows, would you really help this to be a covenant never to be broken that you'd really bind this marriage together in your name. We just really praise you and we thank you. We pray that your presence will be here amongst us throughout this entire ceremony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. David and Christina, I and everyone here, we are all so excited for you. Um, everyone here, I know, feels privileged to be part of this wedding today. Uh, today is a new chapter in your life as you start uh, this next phase of this journey in your lives. Your life will never ever be the same again because from this moment, you're entering into a covenant, covenant marriage, covenant union that will never be broken. Um, it is not just a covenant between the two of you, but it's a covenant between three as you make vows before the Lord. Until this moment, you were two individuals from two separate families who have done a wonderful job raising you. But today, you are leaving your families and you'll be cleaving to one another to form a new family in Christ. No longer two individuals, but now one, united as one. One unit, one family, an inseparable covenant of commitment. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Well, the reality is, it sounds nice and it is wonderful, but today I want to give you just three characteristics about marriage that you need to understand that will look and draw from three different passages so that as you begin this journey of marriage together, you'll fully understand what marriage is. It is wonderful, but it comes with many challenges. So you need to always remember these three principles of what marriage is about. Okay, so I'm gonna give you three words. May you remember them for the rest of your lives. Three words that start with the letter P. Maybe someday I'll ask you again, because I know that it sure doesn't look like you're listening. <laughs> three, three letters. Three words that start with the letter P. Remember, Pastor Paul is giving you three P words so that you'll always remember them. First, 
all characteristics about marriage. Firstly, marriage is a picture. We look at Revelation chapter 19, verse 6 and 7. John writes, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of a rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. This passage in verse 7 is saying that his bride has made herself ready. It's a scene in the book of Revelations that pictures this great heavenly wedding that's coming someday. Christina, you look great today. You look so beautiful. David, you look like, just like you did yesterday. <laughs> I know that for months and months you have been preparing for this day, getting ready, preparing for yourself. I know that all morning you've been preparing. And today as you make vows with one another, you'll be married and you'll spend the rest of your life together. But in the midst of that, you need to remember that your marriage today is a picture. It's a picture of a reality, eternal reality that's come. As you know, everyone who puts their faith in Jesus Christ, who loved them and died for them, becomes part of the church, part of this family of God. And when Jesus comes back to this earth someday, what is he coming for? He's coming to take his bride home eternally. So in this life, for all of us, the most important thing in this life is that you make sure that you're part of that wedding someday. The revelation wedding that we just read about. For when the groom, Jesus Christ, comes to bring him.